All right, and over here, we're coming up to the gravesite of uh, the Hiram Walker family. Hiram Walker was a distillery owner over on the Windsor, Ontario side of the Detroit River, right across from Detroit. Hiram Walker was, um, his, dis his distillery, rather, was um, one of the, was the creator of the whiskey, or Canadian whiskey, rather, of, uh, called uh, Canadian Club. Canadian Club was, uh, it's a mediocre whiskey, I guess. I'm not really a big fan of it. I have had it, though, in the past. And right here is Herm Walker's little uh, grave marker right here. Notice the artistical designs on top of it. Kind of interesting here. He's uh, buried with several of his children, I believe, and his wife. One of the interesting things about Hiram Walker is that he was one of the leading um, monetary contributors to the Children's Hospital of Michigan that located over, located over here in downtown Detroit. Now, um, children's, the Children's Hospital of Michigan was, uh, is one of the leading children's hospitals in the state, if not the country. On a personal note, I have uh, spent quite a few countless hours growing up as a child in the, that hospital. But anyways, Herman Walker was one of the leading, was one of the leading uh, monetary contributors to the hospital of its creation. So, here's his, here's his mausoleum, not mausoleum, but here is his monument and his family. And that's right, it. Once again, we are over in section Q of Elmwood Cemetery, coming up to the monument of the Stroh family. And right here is the gravesite of, or the marker of Bernard Stroh. And as you can see, I left a premium imported German beer for him. And I shared half of it with him, and I left the rest for him to drink in eternity. So, so here's his gravesite. We're going to take a walk up front here. Da, de, da, da, da. Take a walk. There's the B. Stroh name on the monument. Kind of hard to see. Get a close-up right there. Let me uh, get a shot. See, it's very tall. I believe it's one of the tallest monuments in the cemetery. So let me get a close-up here again. So anyways, Bernard Stroh was, um, before I finish, Bernard Stroh was one of the biggest brewery owners here in Detroit back in the 1800s. His brewery lasted up until, I believe, the 70s or 80s when it was bought out by a competitor and the Stroh Brewery was no longer in Detroit, nor was it made, the beer was made, nor, nor was the beer made in Detroit. So, and over here are several of his children, I guess Alice J. Stroh is Bernard Stroh Jr.'s wife, Edwin Stroh right there, I have no idea who that is, and I believe, I believe some of these are his children who died in infancy, and here's Bernard Stroh's gravesite again, and I believe, I believe this must be his wife. Um, I'm pretty sure of it, actually. Yeah, actually, that's Eleanor Stroh. As you can see right there, it says Eleanor, and Eleanor is right there. So here's his wife. As you can see, I kind of uh, spilled a little bit of beer on his gravesite. So I took a couple of sips and I left the rest for him. But anyways, that beer right there, sitting right there, is called 
Wernsteiner or something that's really good beer. It's German beer, but I figured I had some in the fridge at home, so I figured. All right, we are in some. section P of uh, Elmwood Cemetery, coming up to the gravesite of one August Roof Ruff. He was a brewery owner here in Detroit during the 1900s, not 1900s, but during the 1800s, around the time when Bernard Stroh had his brewery here in Detroit. August was a German immigrant, much like Bernard Stroh. And we're going to take a walk over here, really quick. And right here, it appears that this is possibly his gravestone. It's, qu it's quite interesting, to say the least. I'm going to try to zoom up here. It's, I kind of like it because it has uh, the skull and the crossbones right there. It seems kind of odd or interesting. But here's his, uh, there's his name on the monument, apparently. But here's his grave marker. Not that one right there, but this is the, this is um, his monument. You get a close-up view of the name right there. Right here. I'm not sure, you know, uh, come to think of it, he died in 1915 and was born in 1828. This uh, must be his son or something, because I'm starting to wonder if uh, this one right here, the one that some jackass turned over, is possibly the rough monument. Now, knowing me, I'm probably going to, after I'm done filming right here, I'm probably going to turn it back sideways to uh, get a view of it. I guess these must be his uh, children or something. I'm not sure. Anyway, this is uh, his monument. Now, the ironic thing about Augustus Ruff and his cemetery is that if you take a look directly right there, right about where that tall monument right there is that is the grave site of um, Bernard Stroh now Bernard Stroh it appears or actually Augustus Ruff it appears is buried directly behind Bernard Stroh in in the other section here in section P and Bernard Stroh is in section Q I believe so here he is, here's Augustus Ruff, in all his glory. And over here, also in section Indian Mound, also known as IM, we're coming up to the monument of uh, August Goebel. He was a captain in the American Civil War during the uh, 1860s, and he was also the co-founder of Goebel, of that Goebel, brewery here in Detroit in 1873 I believe later on in the 1800s um, he served on the, on the Detroit Common Council and right here is his monument see it looks like he was a lieutenant colonel in in he was a lieutenant colonel in Company A, the 2nd Michigan Infantry, it appears. And looks like he served, like I mentioned, in the Civil War, and he died in 1905. So, so here's his monument, with the global name prominently being displayed on the bottom of it. And it goes all the way to the top there. Um, I believe this is one of the largest, one of the tallest, not largest, one of the tallest 
monuments in the cemetery so here's his gravesite and we are done with this part